We see in several African nations um, the eruption of unending and intractable civil wars. They are indeed linked to structural violence and linked to the legacies of colonialism and neocolonialism. Um, in the Caribbean, you haven't really seen any sort of physical violence erupting as regards the structural violence of climate change. I believe that that might come. Um, if we take, for example, the case of Jamaica, you had the IMF, International Monetary Fund, coming in um, during the international economic global crisis of, of late 70s and early 1980s. Um, and Jamaica was simply hard strapped for cash. Um, they had nowhere else to turn, so they turned to the IMF and the World Bank. And the IMF laid out structural adjustment programs. And those programs went a bit too far. They had conditionalities. They said, if you want these loans, you have to do these things. And it was a long list of things that they had to do, cutting back on public expenditures for health and education. As we now see that those structural adjustment programs, it's a sort of cookie cutter approach. It doesn't work for all economies. And therefore the Jamaican economy, it spiraled into an unending um, debt crisis where Jamaica had to go back to the IMF to get more loans and therefore there are more loan conditionalities. So they're caught in a cycle of structural violence, right? Where you find an external agency really controlling the puppet strings of that economy. Um, and they're not having um, a sustainable independent ground in which they could stand um, to lead their own economy on their own ground. And of course, in subsequent years, you have seen a skyrocketing in crime and violence in Jamaica. But the crime and violence did not happen overnight. It doesn't exist within a vacuum. It, it emanates directly out of that lineage of colonialism, of the country being plundered, and then subsequent to that um, IMF um, intervention, and in my estimation, that intervention, economic intervention, going too far. So you find that Jamaica is caught within a web of, of repaying their loans um, and just having to borrow money to pay for those loans. That's a clear example linking structural violence with direct violence within the Caribbean. If we don't come more together um, so as to be able to push back against IMF and World Bank and International American Development Bank to say, hey, these policies, they're benefiting you wealthy countries, but they're not really benef benefiting the poor countries until we can really push for more regionalization um, we'll continue in this whole cycle of just responding to external, external threats, external interventions, and external control.